everyone, Judith from the Vegan Vegetarian Foodie Network and today we're going to create a fermented beverage that can be both consumed and or used as part of or in whole as a salad dressing. And the ingredients that you're going to need are really simple. Uh, water, salt, turmeric root, raw turmeric root, and raw ginger root. So come and I'll show you what we're doing and how to make it. So for those of you who don't know what raw turmeric root is, uh, it comes in, um, it's just like ginger. If you look at ginger, right, it's got a skin on it, it's a rhizome, it's a root. And that's exactly what turmeric root is. So turmeric root, you're probably familiar with turmeric powder. Well, it comes from the turmeric root. So all they do is they dehydrate this, they grind it up, and they put it into a powder. And that's what you use for a lot of your curries the base of your curries, this and usually cumin and coriander. This is so medicinal. So what I like to do is, this is really black, and if the skin um, is really old, I will shave that off. Otherwise, I keep the skin on both the turmeric root and the ginger root because it aids in the fermenting process. Now, I have uh, three good pieces of ginger here. And I have an entire, I think this is a eight, in, eight cup container, glass container of turmeric root. And you'll notice I'm wearing a glove. The reason being is because turmeric stains your fingers. So I have disposable gloves that I use for painting to do color my hair and for the kitchen. Um, and what you're going to end up doing is you're going to cut this up in chunks and you're going to put it in a jar with some salt and water and it's the salt um, that aids in the fermenting process. Uh, it doesn't matter what salt you use as long as it's non-iodized and you're going to leave this. I like to let this ferment for approximately three to six months. So I have some finished stuff that I have from last year and as long as it's in a sealed container and in a cool place, it will continue to slowly preserve, uh, ferment. But, um, you know, after about nine months to a year, there's no more pro probiotics essentially in it. So you have to remember that three to six months is ideal. And um, so I would leave it out in that case for maybe three months. And if you think you're going to use it within the next three months, then put it in the fridge. And actually, that might even prolong the life for another couple of months beyond six months, so let's say eight months. Um, this, you'll see a lot of sediment in the bottom. You can leave the sediment in the bottom, or you can shake it up uh, and um, bring all that sediment into the liquid. As just the liquid, I like to drink that as a, a digestive tonic in aid. It's quite lovely, and if you um, have sodium restrictions, then typically, a jar of this size would call for a couple tablespoons of salt. You know, just put a teaspoon in, just put a tablespoon. Uh, but make sure you do have some salt in there. It needs salt for the fermentation process. So I'm going to chop all this up and then I'm going to show you what to do with it. But before I do, please note that not only are these digestive aids, they're immunity build boosters. We're coming into cold and flu season. So having something like this is medicine for your body. I truly believe that food is medicine and all of our medicine, medicine should ideally come from food. If you eat whole foods, then you don't need pharmaceutical aids. So I'll chop it up and I'll see you in a moment. I've just done the first part and I want to show you something. So I peeled this, um, this little black piece off with a grater and it's very soft. In fact, it's just like a carrot. That's how soft, in fact, it's softer than a carrot. I make a beautiful, and I might, I might save some of this and show you. I make a beautiful fermented carrot and turmeric root um, probiotic food. And um, these pieces are completely edible. Right now, you could eat this. In fact, I've got one in my mouth <laughs> as I'm talking to you. Um, you can eat this just like this. These are great fried up in a stir fry as well. 
Uh, there's a lot of things that you can do with turmeric root. So what I'll do in upcoming videos is I will show you more and more how to work with raw turmeric root because I think it's incredibly valuable, especially in conjunction with ginger. So at this point, if you don't want these this large, just get a knife. probably just throw it in the food processor if you have one of those graters on the top it'll make it a lot faster I have lots of food processors I think I have two or three strange I don't know maybe it's the Aries in me Aries rules sharp instruments including knives I have a an incredible foray of knives uh, I like to chop things I like to use a knife some people they want it faster easy and hence a food processor is an awesome tool so if you want, you can make it even into smaller little pieces. Um, again, you can eat these pieces once they're fermented. And uh, I would highly encourage that you do. Where do you get turmeric? You get turmeric um, in a, an Indian grocery store, uh, organic health food store. Um, we have a fresh co down the street. Don't forget, I live in the mo metropolitan melting pot of Toronto. So we have... Um, Every, everywhere you go, there's just a foray of different cultures. And so just up the street at Bathurst and Steele's, there's a fresh co, and they carry it as well. So it depends on whether or not you want it organic. Because I typically ferment with it, when I ferment with it, I buy it from fresh co. If I know that I'm actually going to be consuming it without fermenting it, then I'll go up to the organic grocery store. Uh, there's a couple here in Toronto. I'm sure Whole Foods and uh, the Big Carrot carry them. Um, as well as Ambrosia carries it over on Doncaster and Natural Life Health Market up at um, Bathurst and Center Street carry it as well. Um, and I'm almost certain that Nature's Emporium and Organic Garage also carry it. Call ahead of time. If you're out in the uh, East End, um, I'm not sure about Lindsay, but the Peterborough Way, there's a health food store called Joanne's. Uh, up near Trenton University, you can call her and ask her if she carries it. What I find is it's demand and supply, right? Supply and demand. If a, a lot of you use this, um, or if you use a lot of it on a regular basis, uh, just call. Call your store and ask them to carry it. Where I used to work in the organic health food store where I used to work, they didn't carry turmeric. Um, in fact, they didn't carry it until I asked them to. So uh, they didn't think it would sell, and lo and behold, because, you know, a lot of people don't know what to do with In fact, I have Indian people come up to me and say, what's that? You know, they were born here. What's that and what do you do with it? Um, and it's like, well, that's turmeric. You know, there's another name, a uh, 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 Hindi word for it. I can't remember what it's called. Um, I'll, I'll put it on as a text to this video. Um, and... Uh, so anyway, you know, but if it's, it's a supply and demand, so if, there's, if you use enough of it, um, or if there's enough of you wanting to use it in your area, then just uh, broach your grocery store or your local organic health food store and ask them if they'll carry it. It is expensive, I'm not going to lie, so organic, gin, um, sorry, organic turmeric root is about $9.99 a pound. Um, it's right up there with your ginger, uh, your organic ginger. And at the regular uh, grocery store, I think it's about anywhere from three ninety nine to um, I think it's about two ninety nine at current price two ninety nine maybe four up to four ninety nine a pound. Um, so yeah, um, chop it up. Same with your ginger. If you'll notice here, I've chopped up the ginger fairly fine. And remember, I was telling you about the gloves. Okay, so just in case you didn't believe me, I forgot to wash my board before cutting the ginger and already I'm stained. That's how quick it is and how do you get that out? Um, just throw a little tiny drop of bleach in some dishwater because uh, I've also, st I don't know if it'll show, I've stained, yeah, I've stained my counter. I guess I touched the, my hand on the counter. So I'll just get a touch of bleach. Um, I don't like to use bleach but every now and then it's the only thing that takes stuff out, right? Uh, and yes, they do sell organic bleach. <laughs> I don't know how they do that, but whatever. Um, so that's um, that's what you can do with this. I'm going to finish up, and then I'm going to come back. Okay, so moving along, um, you notice a couple more ingredients here. I told you I do a lot of things intuitively. Um, I'm a huge conduit 
uh, receiving conduit of information. Um, in other words, I get downloaded. And so uh, it looks like this medicine that I'm making, and that's what it is, it's food that is medicine, um, is going to have a little extra help with the, I've got a jalapeno and one red chili a cayenne pepper here and whole garlic cloves. I'm going to make an assumption that um, because Dom's going to be driving back and forth to Coburg all winter long, probably for the next year working, that he might end up having a suppressed immune system or maybe somebody in my family or friends or whatever. I'm not sure. This might be a gift for somebody for all I know. Uh, somebody um, is needing a little extra boost in their immunity system here. So uh, I live with Dom, so I'm, it, I'm going to automatically assume that it could be Dom. Um, but that's not necessarily the case. So I've got my jar. I decided to make a smaller jar. And I've finely chopped the ginger and the turmeric. I've left some... Um, turmeric, I call these uh, coins, turmeric coins, because I'm going to make uh, a, a next, another part to this video to do with the fermented carrots. I'm going to save some of the ginger and the turmeric, uh, and I'll show you that recipe in a minute. But for now, let's go back to this. So I want to add to this jar approximately a cup of turmeric root, and approximately a cup of ginger root. This is a four cup mason jar, just for those of you who want to know. I'm going to throw in, oh geez, how many? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve garlic clove and the entire jalapeno, jalapeno and uh, oh, this might even be for my niece Jessica, um, and the red chili pepper. Now I'm going to add approximately a tablespoon of salt for this jar and now I'm going to fill it with water. So if you're going to use this as a, a beverage you really only need about an ounce whether you're sick or you want to, to use it as preventative health, uh, health maintenance, about an ounce or two ounces a day is ample. That's all you need. Uh, even every, if you're, if you've never had this before, I mean, <clears throat> really, if you have it every second day, it's probably going to benefit you. Now, this is a different kind of ferment. It does not typically tend to bubble over. You don't really need to stir it. The salt will dissolve itself. However, I'm going to stir this up. And again, hmm, so look, something's telling me now to move that to that bigger jar. So what did I do with that bigger jar? Here it is. The beauty of holding a selfie stick while trying to film something is that the camera moves around a lot. One day I'll figure out a better system for that. All right. I'll scrape all that out later. Now I'm going to add more water. I'm going to fill it right up. By the way, these are seven cup bowls. I, I don't know about you guys, but as I, uh, as I age, I'm losing both my close vision and my far vision. So um, I have to rely on a magnifying glass because I never know where I put my readers. <laughs> um, so at this point, I'm going to add a little more salt, just another teaspoon of salt. So that's a tablespoon plus a teaspoon of salt. And that's it. Voila. Put the lid on. And again, even though it's not going to bubble over, I like the lid to be loose, just in case. And I still will put that in something in a container to catch the liquids, just in case. I, I don't ever recall any years that I've made this that it has done that. But you never know, right? So now, that is uh, either a fermented drink or a salad dressing. So what, what do you do? Like, how do you make it into a salad dressing? I make all my own salad dressings unless I know somebody's coming over that doesn't like my salad dressings, and then maybe I'll go buy one. But typically, I tend to make all my own homemade salad dressings. 
my salad dressing, the basis of all my salad dressings is equal parts of uh, any sort of oil. I like to use either grapeseed oil or olive oil, like a, the virg, uh, organic extra virgin olive oil. Uh, so it's half and half. So maybe a cup of each, a cup of lemon, fresh squeezed lemon juice and fresh, uh, sorry, fresh squeezed lemon juice. And again, I like to combine sometimes my lemon and my lime. So a cup of that plus a cup of olive oil or grapeseed um, oil. And then a, about a quarter cup even a couple tablespoons of this. And I like to put uh, minced garlic in my salad dressing and a little bit of oregano. And I'll leave that out with this for um, about an hour, uh, just to sort of marinate and allow for the fermenting of this to help ferment or add probiotics to my salad dressing. So that's how you would use this. But again, like I said, even just drinking this, and if you want, you can bring all that sediment into the beverage so it's thicker and you're getting more of the um, health benefits if you actually, cons if you shake it up and consume the, the turmeric and the ginger. So you don't have access to raw turmeric. What do you do? Okay, I'm glad I asked, and I'm glad I have an alternative for you. You all have access to ground turmeric, yes? Of course. And if you can't find raw ginger, you all have access to ginger powder, yes? Mm-hmm. What about a little bit of that cayenne pepper? Cayenne? Cayenne? Perfect. That's all you need, and some garlic, okay? So here's a shortcut. Same medicinal values. Using ingredients that you have. Garlic. Throw it in the jar. This is a two cup, sorry, a four cup mason jar. Again. Throw in a heaping teaspoon of the turmeric powder. Throw in a heaping teaspoon of ginger. And throw in Mm, depending on how hot you want it to be. So this is a, ther a cayenne, 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 however you want to pronounce it. It's a thermogenic. What does that mean? It heats up the body, right? So, and a lot of times you need, um, we're going to put a pinch of black pepper in this too. Um, you need a, sometimes some of us don't absorb the nutrients from, from turmeric and ginger. So if you add a little bit of cayenne and you add a hint of black pepper, Let's see where my black pepper. Okay, let's go over here. Here we go. Black pepper helps your body take in the benefits of the turmeric. Whether you knew that or not, now you do. So there you go. That's the cheat version so to speak and if you do have some paprika you can throw in some paprika if not that's perfectly okay the turmeric powder the ginger powder the cayenne a little bit of black pepper and some garlic is all you need and i look like i'm almost out of water so i'm going to go get some more water but basically fill that up throw the lid on it and let it ferment for at least seven to ten days before you start using it so, I don't know if I've shared this or not. Why would you want to eat, besides the probiotics, why would, what, what other reasons why would you want to eat uh, or consume um, fermented goods? So in this case, when you ferment, whether it's the raw turmeric or the turmeric powder, essentially what fermenting does, it enhances, or think of my magnifying glass, it magnifies the nutritional aspects of whatever it is that you're eating. So in the case of cabbage, which is high in vitamin C, it enhances it like triple fold, tenfold the vitamin C content. Um, so carrots are full of beta carotene, which is great for your eyes, right? So it enhances the quality of the beta carotene. And I mean, there's so much research done on turmeric, how it's incredibly antioxidant and cancer fighting. 
that's what you're enhancing. And so that's why as a daily tonic, an ounce of this fermented every day is extremely beneficial for your health. You can do this with burdock. You can make a burdock root, dandelion root, milk thistle tea, and you can ferment that as well and drink that as well. So all the things that I show you pretty much, and I'll let you know in each video if it's fermentable. I'll have to make a note to myself somewhere so I don't forget to do that, um, to, to mention it to you. But essentially, so that's what another incredible benefit of the fermenting process is that it intensely uh, magnifies the inherent nutritional quality uh, and, uh, of the food and the health benefits of the food. So there's a great cheat version. Um, I think what we'll do with this one is I'll take this over to my water cooler and fill it up. And again, this here makes, just on its own, an incredible salad dressing. Add a little bit of um, your favorite oil, whether that's olive oil or whatever, grapeseed oil, whatever oil you, hemp seed oil. I mean, you know, there's so many different oils with their own health benefits. You don't want to put oil in this when it's fermenting, by the way. That's um, something that you do when you're making a salad dressing towards the end. So that's it. If you want, you can shake it up. And voila. Put a label on it so you remember what it is, unless you don't have a lot of things on the go like I do. I pretty much have to label everything because, I don't know, I don't know if I've ever shown you my cupboards and pantry. I have so much stuff that if I don't label it, I don't know what it is. But if you're not like me and you just have a few ingredients here and there, you probably don't need to label it. You don't need to buy these fancy labels. You can use them. Um, I'll show you what I sometimes use. I sometimes use a Sharpie marker and I write right on this what it is because this with a, uh, a scrubber when I'm washing it, it takes off the black magic marker from the jar. So you don't even need to buy labels, hint, hint. Just a good Sharpie. That's it. So cheat alternative. Pretty fast and easy, huh? And excellent for your health. If you make this and try this and you consume it over the winter months, give me some feedback if you've noticed uh, any improvements um, overall in your, maybe if you're susceptible to colds and suddenly you realize you're not getting colds anymore because, hmm, maybe you're drinking this every day. Whatever you notice, give me some feedback. I'd love to hear it. Talk to you in the next video. One of the best times to consume fermented foods is uh, just after a workout. And uh, whether that's the drink or a fermented food, the reason being is because um, when you're working out, your immune system drops significantly because of the physical stress of the workout. Now, if you have a mentally and emotionally draining relationship or job, same thing applies. You know, they've shown that stress is the number one killer. It causes heart attacks, right? So, and stress really messes with your whole digestive tract. So having these fermented beverages and these fermented foods not only helps your, the gut flora, it keeps your immune system up. It helps your body to absorb the nutrients of the food that you're actually eating, which a lot of people don't realize this. Sometimes we tend to eat more than what we need because our body's not getting the nutrients that it needs from the foods that we're eating. And so these fermented foods and drinks allow for the proper assimilation of nutrients in the body. Great for leaky gut syndrome, Crohn's, colitis, any sort of digestive issues that you have. And another thing that that uh, turmeric, ginger root, and garlic, and the cayenne um, fermented drink is really beneficial for is anyone with arthritis or any sort of inflammation, itis of whatever, whether it's colitis or pancreatitis or whatever, any sort of inflammation in the body. Uh, turmeric and uh, has been proven to be anti-inflammatory. So having it as a fermented beverage or a fermented food 
is that much more enhanced in its ability to do whatever function it needs to do in your body. So uh, no age restrictions on consuming fermented foods, um, anyone from little children to seniors. The only thing is, my only caveat with fermented foods or fermented beverages is, if you don't have a lot of good gut flora already or if the um, the gut flora that's in your already in your system isn't that healthy to start with. So what happens is sometimes the literally the shape of the cell uh, changes, and so when it changes, it's not a, uh, able to operate optimally. There's a fermented bre uh, beverage that you can either buy or make. I'll show you how to make that in an upcoming um, when we make milk kefir, essentially. Uh, but in the grocery, um, sorry, in the health food stores, it's called Mokasan. And essentially what that does, it's a fermented way. And what it does is it helps to reshape the structure of your good gut flora so that it's more able to work optimally. So if you're not interested in making milk kefir with the byproduct, which is a fermented way, by all means, go to the health food store and get some Mokasan. I'd highly recommend that you start there before you ever introduce any fermented foods if that's part of the issue. The other thing is if you eat a really uh, a high sugar diet, so a lot of processed foods, a lot of carbs, pasta, rice, those things that break down in your body and go instantly to sugar, that's what I call a high, a high sugar or a high carb diet. Um, just know that when you start introducing fermented beverages and fermented foods, that that food is now going to be fermented in your digestive system, which means there's a lot of gas accumulation. So because uh, fermenting produces gas, right? And where does it go? Well, you either belch it out or you fart it out. Or you just bloat, right? Not a very good feeling. So uh, you want to make sure that you slowly introduce fermented foods in conjunction with cutting back your high sugar foods. So cutting back your breads, cutting back your cookies, cutting back your uh, cakes and your pastries and um, if you have sugar, uh, sorry, I know so many people that have a double-double or a triple-triple and they have many of those in the course of a day. That's a lot of sugar in your body. So reduce slowly either the number of coffees that you have or slowly reduce the number of sugar in your coffee uh, if you're going to introduce um, uh, fermented foods and beverages into your diet. One of the things you're going to start to notice is that literally your sugar cravings will diminish as also might your coffee craving because when you start introducing fermented foods to your diet, it literally changes everything about you. And so you don't need caffeine because a lot of times we need caffeine because we haven't had a good night's sleep or we're stressed out and our energy has dropped and so we feel we need a pickup. Well, fermented foods goes right to the root of all of that. And it's a process. For me, it was a two and a half year process. Um, but it does it's, all I'm going to say is it can be truly life altering if you're um, committed. It's like anything. If you commit to something, if you dedicate to something, you reap the rewards of it. If you do it half ass, well, that's what you get. You get a half ass result, right? So, some things to think about um, as I make these fermented foods and beverages videos. Would love to hear any feedback you have, um, any issues that you might be having while you're introducing fermented foods and beverages um, because what you might be experiencing might be something that somebody else is experiencing and so by you mentioning it or asking a question can benefit someone else and we're all here to get healthy together right so now for this curry uh, sorry for this um, fermented carrot recipe I have such a variety of different fermented carrot coins that I make uh, again, I'm just intuitively being guided to, to create a recipe right now that I'll share with you. But I do want to tell you my basic, basic recipe. So sh come and I'll show you the ingredients and what I do. And you're going to create with me an intuitive recipe right now. So let's go. So all you need for your basic fermented uh, carrot coin recipe is enough carrots that when they're sliced into coins, that's a coin. Fill a two, so this is a four cup mason jar. 
And again, you always want to leave head space so where that bottom, where my thumb is right there, you don't want to fill it beyond that. So it's carrots, um, some chopped or um, sliced or minced or grated ginger, and either, uh, these are turmeric coins, or you can, again, chop it. And again, you can even make this minced. You can mince it more. And a couple garlic, a tablespoon of salt, and water. And that is the basic recipe um, for fermented carrots. Oh, sorry, one more thing. I also add a pinch of caraway seeds. So that's the basic, basic recipe. But today, uh, <laughs> as I was going in the fridge, so if you've not watched my um, Spirited Earthwalker videos, in those I talk about how plants have consciousness. In fact, everything has consciousness. So in other words, everything has infinite intelligence and everything has emotion. They've done, um, there was a scientist who um, um, hooked a plant up to a polygraph machine and he went at it with fire one time and he went at it with a knife the second time and the plant literally showed an emotional response on the polygraph machine so we know that plants all of this plants all plants all life have infinite intelligence and emotion so everything is a sentient being and if you're able if you are if you get out of your, your own thinking patterns and allow for information just to come to you, then you will learn the language of all these other intelligent life forms. So when I was opening up the fridge, I heard the parsnips calling me. Yeah, I know, right? A lot of people would say she needs to be medicated. No, it, this is part of what you and I and everyone on this planet, this is part of the intelligence and the abilities and gifts that we in, inherently possess, but we're taught not to pay attention to it, to ignore it, to refuse it. And we you, use words like weird and whacked to describe people that have those uh, abilities, right? Or who I should say utilize, because like I said, everybody has those same abilities. So going back now, I went in the fridge to grab the carrots and I heard the parsnips say, we want to be in this recipe. And I'm like, oh, okay. So one of the things, I used to teach um, a fermented food workshop series here in my kitchen. And one of the things that I was teaching the group was that food, if you listen, will tell you exactly how it wants to be utilized, assimilated, digested. And in fact, it will even go so far as to tell you the form that it wants to take. So I did a workshop series called um, Milk Kefir, which I'm going to show you on a future video how to make Milk Kefir and all the different things that you can do once you have made your own homemade Milk Kefir. Because, oh my God, it's endless. And in that, um, I typically use sheep's milk or goat's milk. Sheep's milk is closest to human milk. That's why I like it. Goat's milk um, is the second choice, and then cow's milk, obviously, is my third choice. I went to a, a grocery store, a Concord grocery store up on uh, Center Street near Dufferin. It's an Italian grocery store, and uh, every now and then, all, I think pretty much all grocery stores now have, um, I call it the gimme section. They have food that is coming up close to the expiry date, so they reduce it and they put it in a special section. Well, there was some organic... 1% uh, milk there, cow's milk. So I thought, well, yeah, you know, it was, I think it was a buck for, for two liters. So I bought it. I thought I can make this into milk kefir. So I brought it home. It didn't want to be milk kefir. Now the thing is 1% milk doesn't have a lot of fat and it's mostly water. So typically when you ferment it, it's very liquid. But this, the consciousness of that particular milk and don't forget the consciousness of the milk comes from the consciousness of the cow and the diet from the cow. It chose to be a very thick Greek-like yogurt, which I thought was really cool. So I shared that with the class because when you buy carrots, you know, sometimes you think, oh, uh, I'm going to make such and such it tonight. And you think it's, it's you, which it partly is you, 
coming up with an idea of what you want to eat. Actually, it's your body communicating with you and you, the thinking mind, catch on. But also, it's the food that's in the grocery store, store saying, hey, buy me. I want to be in your stew tonight or in your carrot ginger soup or I want to be fermented or whatever. So it's like you're constantly in communication with food and, in fact, everything in life. But how aware are you of that? Um, so... There's all the woo-woo-ness for today in this conversation. I'm going to cut these carrots into coins. I'm going to cut this parsnip into coins. I'm going to leave the garlic. Mm, I don't know. It's telling me it wants to be chopped, okay? So this garlic's going to be chopped. I'm going to put in, a again, a, a red cayenne pepper and one jalapeno. I'm going to put in some turmeric and some of the ginger and... I thought I was going to put in caraway seeds, and I still might, but I make my own South Indian curry powder. I cannot take credit for this recipe. I will show you one day how to make this, and I will reference the book from which it comes. I make all my own curry powders. Uh, this is absolutely by far the best curry powder I have ever in my life, ever, ever, ever had. Uh, you can go buy curry again. Uh, just typical curry powder. I make I make this one as well. Um, again, I'll show you different recipes on how to make your own curry powders, etc. So the South Indian curry powder wants to come into this recipe, and for some reason, so does the smoked paprika and the hot paprika. So again, this is showing me just by looking at the ingredients in this fermented recipe that the immune system is and the blood so the immune system's needing boosting the blood's needing purifying this is almost like going to be a detoxifying fermented food the beautiful thing about fermenting carrots especially for anyone on a paleo diet is carrots are typically quite high in sugar but when they're fermented all that sugar gets eaten out by the yeast and the bacteria in the fermenting process and contributes to creating probiotics. So you'll typically hear me say, the bacteria and the yeast eat the sugar and poop out probiotics. That's essentially what happens. And so, you know, it, these are quite lovely. Now, on that note, if you're new to fermented foods, there almost always is a very significant trace of alcohol content when something is fermented. So for example, when I make um, kombucha, this is a finished a first ferment kombucha, this has equivalent alcohol content to a non-alcoholic beer, so I think it's 0.5%. And actually this one probably has even less because I like my kombucha more like vinegar than I do a tartness. So, um, Please keep that in mind. If you absolutely are not to have any alcohol whatsoever, I would not recommend that you get into fermented foods. Instead, just take a probiotic. But, you know, be specific with your doctor and say, you know, maybe you're not supposed to have alcohol, but can you have 0.5%? Will that be okay with your body? Um, don't just assume because you can't have any alcohol that you know a 0.5 percent is off your list especially if you're getting the benefits of the probiotics from the ferment so let me go ahead and prepare everything and i'll show you what to do
So I'm going to add, you know, it's funny because I didn't realize until I started making these videos how often I say the word so. <laughs> All right, this is the South Indian curry powder, a heaping teaspoon, a pinch, quarter teaspoon of the smoked paprika, and a quarter teaspoon of the hot paprika. Oh, okay, so apparently, oh, let's see if I can do this, there we go. Shaking all around the place. Apparently, some caraway seeds do want to be in here. So a pinch of caraway seeds, oh, a couple of pinches, okay. And then I'm going to fill it up with water. So let's grab the water. And again, I use spring water. I use spring water for pretty much everything. The only thing I don't use spring water for is bathing and washing my hair, but I cook with it, I drink it, I make all my kefirs, ferments with it. Um, even if I boil, boil pasta or potatoes, I always use spring water. That's it. Now, the final ingredient for this, and I have to go to the back room, is cabbage leaf. So let me go get that. The old wilty cabbage leaf on the outside of your cabbage is perfect for these. It's pliable, it's soft, it's still um, quite valuable for this type of uh, recipe. You might not want to use it in a salad, but it's awesome for this. I'm going to move over to the sink because I just know that this is probably going to overflow. Yeah. So I'm pressing that down to cover. Perfect. Awesome. Yep, that's exactly what I wanted. And then, uh, bring it back, put the lid on it. This will definitely overflow. Now, because this has t my um, curry powder, has turmeric, and because there's the turmeric in there, this is definitely going to overflow and stain whatever you put under it. So my suggestion is get a glass bowl and put this glass jar inside of it because in that way you can take the stain off your glass bowl. Or if you have a, a tool, you know, a metal bowl or a plastic bin that you don't really care if it gets stained. But just keep that in mind. It will definitely stain it. So... Um, and again, keep the lid loose. And in fact, so long as this is on relatively, see that's not too snug, because that's probably a little too full to be quite honest. I should probably take some of that out. In fact, I'm going to. You know, you improvise. Don't, don't uh, be afraid to, to go back in and add or take out things if needed. That's, that's probably more better. There we go. That's much better. Yep. Ah, awesome. Yep. Perfect. So typically, you would really just need to have that on. Unless it's a summer season, you've got a lot of fruit flies that can crawl up under that, which is why you want to put this on. Um, it doesn't matter what season it is here because I've always got fermenting going. I always have fruit flies. I'm one of the fruit fly feeders of the world. <laughs> so that's how you make fermented carrot coins. And um, this is the spicy curried version. Leave this uh, to, to ferment at room temperature for up to 10 days. You can eat it anywhere from 3 to 10 days, depending on how um, the consistency that you like. I like um, minimum 10 days um, at say 21 degrees temperature inside. Um, obviously on a hot day, if you don't have air conditioning, it's going to ferment a lot faster. And on, if you have it, my back room is cold, it will take longer. It could take up to 20 days. So temperature definitely has a huge uh, impact on the fermenting process. So that is the curried um, version. And once it is fermented to a, a certain consistency, consistency that you like, by all means, throw it in your fridge. Okay, and that will slow down the fermenting process and give you time to eat it before you lose all the probiotics. So if you were to leave this out for seven days and put it in your fridge and say forget it for about six months, it's still perfectly good. Remember all these juices in here? The, that's called the brine. See the, the juice that's in here that we made? This brine can also be used as a liquid medicinal drink 
or use it in any of your fermenting recipes that call for some sort of starter. This is called a starter. Or you can use it as a basis of a salad dressing. Pretty awesome, eh? Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed that because I've had a lot of fun making it, and I'll see you in the next video.